Welcome back to John's Films, your home for video editing benchmarks, hardware recommendations, and videos you can't find anywhere else. Today's the day. Today's the day I make that video many of you have been waiting for. Uh, it's the one where I say, okay. You see that video up above? That was my take on the Apple M1 on the new Mac Mini and MacBook Pros and the MacBook Air. Uh, yeah. So that was my perspective on it for my video editing use. However, I had an idea. Let's do a December build of the month, and the build of the month is going to be $700. I hit that price point for a couple of reasons. One, that Apple? Yeah, uh, that's right around that right price point. And two, I don't think you can build a video editing computer in Windows that could touch the Mac M1 uh, for $700 of new parts. We go used, we might be able to make it work, but we're going to give that a shot today. So the official recommendation, I want to be clear so we can make sure I'm not that big an idiot. The Apple Mac Mini M1 is the value proposition and the best performance. I think you can get around, say, sub $1,000 for video editing. Step two. We're now going to try and configure a Windows machine that could maybe get close. Let's go check it out. Let's make some tough choices. Here we go. Starting with the CPU, we need to spend about, well, as little as possible. We still want probably four or six cores. You see, in the free edition of DaVinci Resolve, which we'd be using with the $600, $700 machine, it leverages the CPU much more than it does the GPU partially because the GPU features are locked behind the studio paywall, noise reduction, and others. However, you can use the CPU and the number of cores that are here for rendering, as well as during your timeline editing, it'll be doing decoding in the background while it's also running the UI and executing. So, if we can get a six core processor, that would be a winner. I'm gonna choose AMD because six cores, AMD pricing is gonna be a little bit cheaper. Sort price low to high. Oh boy. Core count up to six. 1600. All right, this is the 1600 that they put back through the fab in a 12 nanometer process instead of the original 14. Uh, it's a little bit quicker, it's not that much quicker. I can now choose a CPU cooler. There's one boxed with that 1600, a motherboard. Here I'm going to want a B450 motherboard, which I could even use a B350 if I put a BIOS. No, oh, yeah, I could use a B350 motherboard, but let's see what the price rolls out to. So we can start here, a B450 ASRock. I'm going to assume that we're going to need Wi-Fi, and that's going to bump my price up to $92. Wi-Fi, just because you're not likely, with a $700 machine, you're not likely to want to run an Ethernet cable around your house. So we'll choose the bazooka. Woohoo, okay. Interesting naming convention on that one. Notice this is a micro ATX board, which gives you, in this case, two X16 PCIe slots. It has four slots of RAM, uh, which is nice if we want to upgrade this later, which we probably will, because today we're only going to put two 8 gig sticks into it. Speaking of RAM, let's go ahead and jump on that. So now we'll stick the memory in here. We need two 8 gigabyte sticks. We want to do so as cheaply as possible. There's one four, two fours. We could get by on 8 gigabytes of RAM. And this could be <laughs> this could be where we run back and make that change. What's interesting about this, you have the option to get one 8 gig stick or two 4 gig sticks. Because the motherboard supports dual channel RAM access, we'd actually do better to buy the two fours. It would limit our upgrade options in the future, but you're able to access each individual four, ch four gigabyte stick individually at the same time through dual channel access rather than one eight gigabyte stick. This can dramatically speed up your processing. So if we did two fours for 40 bucks, I said two eights would end up being, well, we're still not there. Two eights, 52. Ooh, actually, we'll give that a shot. Now, I have not validated that this particular RAM works with this motherboard. You'll have to check that yourself because the price season is going to move around. And so if you're truly going for the cheapest you can get, it's going to fluctuate and you're not going to be able to pick these exact parts. That said, check your motherboard compatibility. Ensure that on the qualified vendor list, the RAM that you're looking at is there. Storage, we need 
maybe one SSD. We're not looking for an NVMe drive here uh, because we can't afford it. We're looking for maybe 512. And now what I'm doing is I'm just looking on the left here. Looks like we've got too many of those to do that. So I'll bump the capacity up to 500. And we'll see what's the cheapest possible. I don't know any of these. I've seen Michigan for RAM. I haven't seen them for storage, though it's in the same world. The T-Force is pretty popular, but I'm going to go with... Here's an SSD. I wonder if our motherboard has an M.2 slot. Let's find out. You can do that here in PC Part Picker on the left. It does have an M.2 slot, so we're going to choose that. It'll save us some cabling to run and um, should work just great. So there we go with a $51 chip, $346 so far. And now we're going to have to pick a case. Case-wise, the NZXT H510 mid-tower supports the mini ITX motherboard we chose. I've built in it myself. Uh, it's a nice case. It looks decent, especially for the price of $63. We also need a power supply. Notice I'm saving <laughs> as much budget as I can. And I'm going to go back to the GPU because it truly will be a function of how much can we afford. And now I'm coming into my power supply. Seasonic 80 plus bronze, 650 watt for $51 is a winner. And now you can see we've got about $240 left. That $240 left is for our graphics card. And it's a little bit more than I thought we would have left. So that's good. I'll bump this up to 200. And let's see what we've got available to us. 1050 Ti is not a chip that I would recommend. It's basically uh, stripped, stripped, stripped down. The 1650 Super is a little better. It's got 4 gigabytes of video RAM, 8 gigabytes in the RX 570, but we can get a lot more compute for this money. And that extra compute maybe would come in the form of... We're getting close to our budget, a 1660. 6 gigabytes of RAM. You have a tough choice to make here. Do you want more video RAM? like eight gigabytes on this RX 580? Or do you want more compute power here on the 1660? This one's also the mini form factor, which is pretty good for the, the case and the purchase. We're gonna do that. Click add, and now we are at 699.41. Whew, I'm telling you, that was close. I do not believe that this will have performance on par with the Mac M1. I think you're going to see some lagging with the decoding that has to happen in that six core Ryzen first generation processor. I think you'll see decoding lag. I think you're going to use your playback menu for caching. You may even have to optimize your media in certain cases. Depends on what codec you're shooting with and what you're editing with. Big problem here is that on the Mac, hardware accelerations in place in the chip for H.264 and H.265. In the Windows machine here, Unless you have the studio version, you have to decode and encode H.264 and H.265 in software in the processor. And it's going to be slower, it will have lags, and that M1 will smoke this machine. But if this is what you want, you want to preserve upgradability for the future, you want to be able to drop in all the way up to a new Ryzen 3000 series processor with the B450, and with a BIOS upgrade, you could go to a 5000 series processor if MSI makes that BIOS upgrade available to this board. But you could add RAM, you could add a different graphics card, you'd have a lot more flexibility. So it's a choice you have to make here for $700. I'd probably go with the M1 every time, but here's your other option should you be interested. As always, links are below and Hey, take this opportunity to click subscribe. I really appreciate you stopping by and checking the channel. We've got a lot of fun videos. Every month I do a build of the month. Seems to be helpful for a lot of folks. So stop on by, click subscribe, and look forward to you in the next video. Well, as we've seen, it's not that easy to build a $700 video editing machine if you're really trying to think about the long range and you're trying to think about fusion and all types of pain that you could bring it. In this case, I'm now recommending Apple, the Mac Mini M1. Was I wrong before? No, my reasons still stand for my use cases. However, do I think it's a fantastic platform? Yes, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The Mac Mini M1 chip 
that you also find in the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro are fantastic and it is game changing in the industry for central processing units. I am excited about it. I think it's going to be a fantastic technology and I can't wait for what comes next. That said, it's not that easy to build a Windows machine currently with an x86 processor in it that can beat the Mac M1 chip for our use. Thanks for watching. As always, let me know if you got any thoughts about this down below. Happy to see your feedback and look forward to you in the next video.